morning back on the farm what are we talking about today today i'm going to cover mixing grass types in other words when you're going to mix in something like a bermuda and a zoysia or two different types of grasses and i'm also going to talk about what you should not do when it comes to seeding on a warm season lawn especially if you have sod even though it may be 10 15 years old i'll cover those two subjects and then i'm going to show you farm stuff because yes i finally arrived back to the farm and a brutal three days of work <laughs> is ahead so hold on hey guys doc so in the lawn guides there should be a qr code over my face i really address this pretty strongly in there of talking about why you don't run to Lowe's or Home Depot or go online and order just Bermuda seed and throw it out on your sod lawn even though your sod lawn looks like crap. <laughs> I did a, I forget how many years ago it was and I've done this several times, I've taken a lawn that was basically 70% weeds and mud and brought it back to a beautiful Bermuda lawn based on the, based on the type of Bermuda that was originally installed. So what does that mean? That means that I pushed that lawn really, really hard after doing a full weed treatment, really strong weed treatment. You read the label, kill off all the weeds, and then you go out and start hitting it with fertilizer. Now we can still push our lawns if we have irrigation. If you have irrigation or if you're getting a lot of rain, just push it, just put out PGF complete. Now I'll link to all the products I'm talking about in the description below. On that page is also a link to the lawn guides. There's three of them. There's a Bermuda Lawn Guide website, there's a Zoysia Guide website, and there's a Cool Season website. Over a million and a half people have used those websites now. It's, it's, they've been up for years, there's no sign up, there's no app, there's nothing. We don't want your information, just use it. But in those guides, I specifically talk about not going out and just understanding the difference between a hybrid Bermuda and a common Bermuda. That's the biggest mistake. The other thing is, is types of zoysia. There's, when you buy a zoysia sod, you're typically buying a finer blade of zoysia. It's not the heavier blade that a lot of the seeds produce. And a lot of that stuff is hybrid. But the same thing for Bermuda. If you have a Bermuda lawn, there's, and it came originally, even if it was 10 years ago, if it was installed from sod, it's a hybrid. And so when you go out and try and find matching seeds for that, there's gonna be a variance in color texture and I've got I had at the old house I actually had a couple spots where someone had seeded and you could see it you can see the difference now it's not horrible now they do make Bermuda seed and they do make zoysia seed that has that will replicate your uh, more of a turf type or sod type warm season grass hopefully I'll go down below and I'll try and find some of those but you can but if if my first recommendation is is watch that video of the world's worst lawn maybe i'll put a link to it on that page too where i go out my neighbor who knows nothing about lawn care they rent the house uh, they really didn't give a damn about how the house looked on the outside and i went over and said hey i'm willing to help you so i went over there i sprayed all the weeds i killed off all the weeds really strongly and then i went back and immediately put down fertilizer because you can put down fertilizer right away and so they, we started pushing their lawn and pushing their lawn. And guess what? Within about six weeks, man, the lawn actually started looking great. So what do you plan to do, Doc? I plan to, if you're going to mix grass seeds, you want to mix grass seeds that actually look sort of similar. So th this zoysia has a thick blade to it. I don't want to come out here and put a fine blade Bermuda on here. I want a heavier, so I'm going to use common Bermuda seed. Just the stuff you order on the Amazon, I'll put a link to it, and I'm going to mix it in here. Now that's more aggressive in its growth with its runners, and it'll cover these bare spots out here, but I have got a ton of Bermuda now. The first year I actually killed off the Bermuda inside here, but since then it's just, it's just battling it out. So why not let it battle out? It looks fine. So let me show you a couple other spots where it's battling it out. So anyways, this is a mix of Bermuda. This is almost, look at this, this is almost all Bermuda over here growing in from the street. Bermuda and then zoysia over here. So we're going to mix it. Hey guys, so uh, real quick, down at the beach house, I had the most, from dirt, we had the most beautiful zoysia lawn that you've ever seen. 
And over the past couple of years, some problems have come up. And a lot of those problems have to do with construction debris and the old military um, debris that's around there. So I've already got Bermuda running into the yard from the street. And there's a lot, I would say probably 25% of the lawn is now actually Bermuda. And the zoysia is just not wanting to really grow into those bare spots. So I tried. I went down there and I seeded when I got down there. I scarified. I verticut. I've done that twice down there. I've even got a little video of me doing it the second time. I put down more zoysia seed and finally I went ahead and said, screw it. I said, I just ordered some common Bermuda grass seed and put down common Bermuda grass seed just to fill in all those areas. Hey, so we're talking about mixing seeds. <laughs> So I got home this morning at about 10 30. I've been working non-stop on this property since then and it's about 6 15 and I look out back and I go dude I gotta cut this grass. One of the problems with all this rain is that Ryan really hasn't been able to get out here that often to cut so I got grass that's what I got grass that's coming up five six inches tall but look how nice this looks all right, so what is this? This is that mix. This is that mix of uh, Combat Extreme and then SPF 30 Hybrid Blue. That is phenomenal. I mean, that's it is so thick. Look at this. This is crazy, dude. I mean, this is really, really crazy. Just how beautiful that is. So the road frontage is looking a lot better, man. Look at that. So I'm going to come out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait right before my next rainfall. I'm going to come out and throw some more Bermuda seed down here, but man, that looks good. So what are some of the takeaways from mixing that we've learned through this? Number one, make sure that if you're going to mix grasses that the actual texture, the width of the blade, the way the structure of the actual grass, make sure that they're similar. So this is Combat Extreme, which is a more fine fescue mix, along with a hybrid bluegrass, which is a very fine fescue mix. And the two of them just marry up perfectly. Down at the beach house, I have Zenith Zoysia, which is a much thicker blade than a Zenith, than a Zoysia sod and I'm putting down common Bermuda. I'm not going with an expensive hybrid type Bermuda seed. I'm going with a wider blade to match up. And I'm telling you, if you look at that lawn from, you know, from far away, it looks like all the same grass. And that's one of the key points. The other thing is, is if you have, if there are two different needs, let's say you have an area that gets a lot of sun and then an area that gets more shade which grasses are gonna benefit from that. So you can mix that. So I have a back area that has a bunch of shade over there. Um, I'm not gonna put a Bermuda over there because the Bermuda is not gonna grow in a shady area. So let's find a grass that looks similar to it that does well in a shady area. So if you're gonna mix seeds, do it for a particular reason. Um, a, lot of, a lot of your grasses that are actually sold now are actually mixes so you'll look at the bag and it'll say a contractor mix it'll be a mix of different fescues or a fescue mix it's going to be different types of kentucky and blues or whatever there are certain mixes and that's really well accepted in the industry but if you're going to mix seeds make sure you do it for a purpose make sure that they look alike anyways let me just show you some crazy farm stuff that's been going on around here i'll just pop it up this is a crazy video <laughs> sorry Can you see the water flowing? 
that water is flowing all down here. Crazy. We go from the drought to flood. I'm almost a little afraid to go up to the other fields. Hey guys, Doc. So I pull up from the beach house, a four hour drive back here roughly. I pull up and we have had an absolute ton of rain. I mean a ton of rain. <laughs> How's that impacting you and how's that impacting me? Well, what I figured I'd do is I'd walk you around the farm property and show you. We have had over seven inches in seven days. That's a lot of rain. And we went from almost a two and a half week drought where everything was dying because it was dry until now where I'm walking around in squishy water. So one of the things I'm doing in this garden this year is we're kind of leaving it up to nature. We're not doing fertilizers, we're not doing herbicides we're not doing um, fungicides pesticides and what we want to do is we want to say okay just using dirt booster in these gardens how does everything turn out does it grow well um, and so far it's really doing well based on the fact that we had a two and a half week drought and now we got floods um, so I'll take you down I gotta do treat the pond I'm gonna take you around I'll show you some of the fields I'll show you the cornfield but first thing I want to do before I left, I took uh, a little bit of that Dirt Booster compost and sprinkled it around the edge, and I threw down some wildflower seeds. Look at this. So all the way down here is all wildflowers. They're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. All the way down the entire garden. This is what I've got all the way around the garden. Look at that. All the way there and all the way in the back. Isn't that gorgeous? Bees are just tons of bees in here, even though it's raining. So first stop for me, why do I do that? I know I'm gonna get blue dye on my hands. Why do I not wear gloves? <laughs> That's pond dye. So I drove through these woods and I actually see like a sheet of water coming down from the upper fields down to the pond. And then I have this creek. Thank God we built this massive bridge here because I would not be able to get across. And what I do now is when I put my pond treatments in, I'll just come down here on this back creek. It's actually a spring. The pond is spring fitted. So you can see the old bridge that was here before. And then see how that water is flowing? So there definitely is a little bit of silt in the water back here. But um, I've dumped blue dye and copper sulfate in here and then i also went ahead and put a gallon of algicide in here as well too i really want to make sure that i'm not getting any nutrients even though we don't use fertilizers if there's any nutrients coming into the pond i want to kind of counteract that with some of this stuff i want to get that pond to clear up <laughs> oh man so the water is halfway up on this tube probably be a snake in here and it is just sucking out water. Can you hear that? I've never heard that before in here. Oh my God. So this, this tube normally just goes like this and there's just a steady stream. Dude, it is shooting like 10 feet out. Oh my god. Norm just to step it up. It's too shooting like so uh <laughs> the day continues. I went around doing a whole bunch of cleanup. I actually set some raccoon traps back up. We've taken we have a raccoon infestation which is killing off our turkey population. We've taken I think it's 38 raccoons off that back property and while I was away I started seeing them on the cameras again. So our goal is to take at least 75 out of here to get that population down so the turkeys can come back up because they devastate turkeys. Anyways, um, you can see I got a lot of high growing weeds now all around. So I've hooked up the UTV to my tow behind. 
to the DR Power Pro 44T. I don't know why I say it like that. <laughs> uh, I love this thing, by the way. This has been, I cut all my fields with it. I cut saplings up to an inch, inch and a half with this thing. It's great. So this thing's been sitting here for a month. Let's see what happens. Is the fuel on? The fuel is on. I never shut it off. Throttle her up. Choke. Ready? see what this thing does I've got 24 inch weeds over here and I'm taking them down to about 8 inches over here so what's my opinion about dirt booster and corn let me talk about this for a minute. Um, because we didn't have a way to work this soil with the dirt booster, in other words, we didn't come up here and till this with a rototiller and put the dirt booster into the soil, the soil is basically lacking in nutrients up here. What I did was I just came back and sprinkled some in the soil and tried to get it in a little bit. And it, you can see on this area in here is where it actually I could actually get it into the soil a little bit and it did well, but I'll be honest, um, corn fields take up such a volume and acreage. I don't think it's um, I don't think it's worth it. I think you're better off to go with just a cheap to get a soil test done, figure out what your soil is lacking if you have a large section of corn, and just inject those right in. Hopefully, strip tilling, which is kind of what we did up here. So on the smaller areas, like where we have like with gardens where we can really manage it that's the area that is dirt booster is really effective now this fall what we'll do or even winter or next spring is we'll come back and we'll work these rows with a little bit of manure and dirt booster and biochar and then we should be able to produce just an all-natural corn crop but right now this is the first time this this field has been planted i'm guessing in close to a hundred years it's never had plantings because I know the history of this place. And for the past 20, 30 years, goats were just up here. But uh, no planting. I had to run back to the cart real quick. I wanted to show you the water, but all this rain is actually kind of murky. But look at that. <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous? Can you see him? These bluegill are just monsters out here, some of them. But the water, right before I left, here's a funny story, right before I left, the water was super clear and the bass started biting on worms. And one of my last fish to catch, I threw right over here and I felt bump bump, I set the hook. I said, oh man, I'm on a stump. But while well, the stump started moving and I had the drag where I could barely pull it out with a fist. And that fish went woo, woo, woo. And he came up to the top, dude, that was the biggest bass of my life. That was like at least an eight pound bass out of here. It was just insane. He was a monster. And I think it was, what it probably was, is the same fish that Ryan caught a year ago that was about seven pounds and now he's about eight. Whew, but that was fun. Like I said, with all this rain, we got a lot of siltation in the pond, the little guys. There's one. And there's two out there. Oh, they're so cute. So cute. Get to see all my babies down over there. Look how cute he is. Oh, I'd love to see the babies. Look at them. So if you're still sticking around, I'm going to show you something kind of special. I'm going to show you the vegetable garden just for a minute. But there's, I pull up and there's a doe right in the field. Uh, they hide their babies back over in here and 
back over in here. They're just so cute. I just love to see them. So we really just manage, we really manage this place very heavily for the wildlife. So this whole field is planted and managed strictly for wildlife and the deer. Same thing with that middle field. Um, and we really don't hunt them a whole lot. I think uh, last year we took one deer off this property out of the thousands of deer that we see out here. We really just just love to see them, love to have them around. And I've got, so far I've counted probably 40 bucks already on camera. And I got a couple really big bucks this year. But I want to show you something. The sun is finally out. Look at all these wildflowers over here. Isn't that gorgeous? And then all the way down here, everywhere around here, the bees are just pounded in here. There's bees all over these flowers and they come in and they help pollinate here. So the good witch is going to come by. We need to take off a lot of the foliage on the on these tomato plants to open them up. Um, but you can see our plan is working where we have nice clover in between here. We don't leave any exposed ground in our gardens. Every inch of ground is covered by something. But look at this. This one row has got to have 100, 150 pounds of tomatoes already. Crazy or what? Every single plant is like this. All the way down. Every single pepper plant. Every single pepper plant has, oh, I'd say six to eight peppers on it. Look at this. Is that crazy or what? It's just loaded with peppers. <sighs> Look at these tomatoes. Look at these things. I want you to keep in mind what I've been preaching to you is that you don't need to use fertilizers in your vegetable gardens or your flower gardens. Use Dirt, Bo Burst, Dirt Booster Plus in your soil and then make some of the compost that we make and just top dress it with that and that's it. That's what's doing this. There's no synthetic fertilizers on this whole operation up here. The only place I'm going to put any synthetics, of course, is on my backyard. And I'm going to have to put some N and P up on that corn. It's low in phosphorus. We test soil tested it. It's low in phosphorus and it's low in nitrogen. I can tell because the corn is, it's not dark green. It's that light and it's kind of short. So I'm going to have to do some synthetics up there this, this year. Next year, next year I plan to work that cornfield like we work all these rows where we worked it into the soil ahead of time. These are my peas. My peas are all coming up and I'm going to show you some of the monsters that we've got growing here. See if I can find one of them for you. Let's see. Okay. So I told Ryan, I said leave, uh, leave one big zucchini at least on each one of these. Look at this thing. It's got to be it's almost 24 inches. Look at that. Look at that over there. There's another one. So there are some monsters. I want them to leave one big zucchini. Why do I leave one big zucchini? Because if someone can make some zucchini bread, I like to give them the big ones and they can make the zucchini bread. If we're gonna eat it as a vegetable, we pick them really small. Otherwise they get too tough. And then the yellow squash. Now the yellow squash, um, we've gotta come through here. We've got yellow squash that matured too large. They're actually too big. Look at, look at all the yellow squash in there. It's just loaded with yellow squash. And a lot of these yellow squashes are just too big. But there's some nice, real juvenile ones. Uh, cucumbers. I've got a ton of cucumbers coming up and growing. Green beans. Anyone want some green beans? If you've ever grown green beans, you just can't keep up with them. There's thousands of green beans. I'm going to be eating green beans. I took a five-gallon bucket of produce over to my neighbor's house and left it on their doorstep. I hit their bell with doorbell and said, here you go. <laughs> But I just love, one of the things I love here is I just love all this clover that's down here on the floor. No raw dirt. I don't have any raw dirt. And then all the wildflowers all the way around. Um, I did notice our orchard is being attacked by Japanese beetles. So I'm going to have to get some probably seven. I got to put something on those orchard plants because the Japanese beetles are just, they're having a, they're having a cow over there. These tomato plants are just insane though, man. Absolutely insane. So anyways, 
this is where we are i'll do some more videos on the vegetable garden i'll answer some questions you guys are posting up a lot of questions about dirt booster and when you can use it how you use it what type of manure that kind of stuff but anyways that's enough for this video <laughs> doc's tired and i got still got a lot of work i've got um just so you know i've got um an excavator and a skid steer coming next week and we're going to start to work on some of these drainage areas around here i got two big piles of gravel we're going to dig some drainage ditches we're going to fill them with gravel we're going to get that done and then the area that's in front of that pond i got a, i finally found someone that's got a load of topsoil because all the topsoil is wet they have a load of dry topsoil they're going to bring i'm bringing about 18 yards of topsoil and i'm going to rake that area and we're going to put topsoil we're going to plant some kind of grass down there I haven't decided yet so anyways, hit subscribe, talk to you later, doc.